Hey, on today's video, we're going to cover parts of the shock. Uh, the different names and the parts that are in the shock absorber. And we're not going to do a deep dive on this. We're just going to cover uh, a few of the highlights and the names of the shocks, uh, the names of the parts. So you understand what we're talking about when we're talking to you, whether it's a repair or you need to call your shock guy and say, hey, I have a bad seal head. So you know what that is. So more on that when we get back, shock parts. Hey, today we're going to cover different parts of the shock. You know, basically the names of it. Not, we're not going to get into it technical and what the functions of all this stuff is. But we're going to cover the name of the shock uh, parts. So when you're talking to your builder, you can say, hey, I need a shaft or a shock eye, uh, rod in. Uh, piston, wear band. If he says we had to replace these things, maybe you understand what it is and why you had to replace it. So we're going to cover the shock parts. It's a little bit basic, but stay with us. We'll have fun doing it and we'll all learn together. So let's look at this. Okay, we're going to cover just a few of the basics on the shock. This is a shaft assembly. Um, it is from a standard BSB shock, and these are the parts. This is a shock eye. Every shock has them. Um, some better than others, but that's the shock eye. Um, I think pretty much everybody calls it the same thing, but this would be the jam nut for uh, that shaft. Then the travel indicator which are done different ways. Then the seal head. So we call it a seal head, a gland assembly. Um, this ring threads on. So we call this the threaded ring. This the gland. Gland head assembly. Um, if a shaft is bent in your shock, this is going to get replaced. If it uh, looks like the shaft has been tried to be forced in there, we're going to replace this, okay? I know it's added expense, but it just needs to be done. And then the shaft, 7-inch uh, shaft, 9-inch uh, shafts, um, then you go to the main piston. Um, and then you have your shims on your main piston compression rebound. Um, those are your main shims. The body of the shock is can be different uh, depending on what you get. This is a three-piece design. Okay, it has the body, the connector ring, and the extension tube. Okay, so th th we built this this way because it makes changing base valve to connector ring easier and it, it keeps the cost down on repairs because we can replace just this body we don't have to replace the, the base valve or the connector tube. So this is the body, uh, you know, in a 7-inch or a 9-inch, um, but that's the body. Now our bodies are, are done a little different. You, you're not going to be able to see in there, but they are honed bodies. They are um, surface treated on the inside to have less stiction and to allow this wear band. This is the wear band and they allow that wear band to move freely. Now we also use um, two different types of bands. This is a split band and we use a solid band uh, but these are Teflon coated bands. They're designed to move easier in the tube and to go from one direction to the other direction more freely. That's a wear band. We put a wear band on the divider piston, which the divider piston is in this part here, the extension tube. Um, that, or this might be called the top tube. Um, and then the connector ring, in this case, this was a base valve. Uh, the connector ring is open fully, nothing. On a base valve, you have shims, a base valve bolt and nut. Uh, you have shims on both sides. That makes up the base valve. And of course the top cap. Uh, here's an expanded uh, cap. Um, 
and it has a calm ball and a hyper screw in it. This may have a Schrader valve here, but uh, this is expanded um, expanded air volume cap. Um, and this kind of makes up the parts of the shock. So if you're if you're wondering, you know, when a guy says, "Oh, hey, we had to put uh, a seal head in." Or we had to put a new shaft in or a shock eye, uh, gland assembly, uh, you understand what's happening and why. If the body gets a dent in it, you know, you see this is just, you know, one little body, you know, and it's 80,006. So if it gets a dent in it, it's going to come in contact with the piston pretty quick and that has to be fixed. Now we can roll out some of the dents. Um, and some of them we can't, they're just in the wrong spots. But shock parts. This is just a small overview of the parts of the shock and the pieces. Uh, this is just one shock that we have, but the common things are they have a gland or a seal head, a shaft, a shock eye, a piston, uh, a body, a end cap. Some shocks don't have an end cap because they're just all formed into one body, but these are the common parts, the divider piston. These are common parts of a shock. Um, that you'll hear talked about. So if you need some help, give me a call 620-326-3152. Uh, check it out on the website bsbgofast.com, uh, Facebook J Neil, J Neil uh, on YouTube. Help us grow our channel, like, share, and comment. Always comment. Um, I always try to answer all the comments. And I appreciate the support you guys give us with some of your great comments. So, as always, uh, go fast, go left. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.